What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Please subscribe if you have not already. Please, please, please consider subscribing. I really do appreciate it, uh, and it helps me make more videos if I see that more people subscribe. And you can definitely let me know what kind of videos that I've already made do you like, what do you not like, and I can kind of tailor it, my channel, to be exactly that. Like, whatever people, you know, are kind of uh, into at the moment, and what do you want to know more about. Um, so please do consider subscribing. Now let's get right into this. Um, this is a great Seeking Alpha article written by Stephen Fiorillo, um, and it basically goes over 17 in-depth categories to compare Microsoft and Apple. And I was really surprised, because if you backtest a portfolio of Microsoft versus Apple, they're basically identical as far as the last three, five, and even 10 years, as far as like uh, return on investment from like a $10,000 initial investment. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy how like equal they are, but they actually have a lot of different things going for each of them. And Steven does a really great job of looking at like 17 categories and seeing like which ones, you know, who wins which category. Uh, and in the end, he tallies it up and gives uh, awards points to, you know, each uh, company. And one company is a clear, clear winner. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of time. Again, this is a free article on Seeking Alpha. It was uh, written on April 2nd, 2021. So this past Friday. Um, and again, it's a really great article. I highly encourage you to, uh, you know, uh, you know, log in set up an account with Seeking Alpha so you can read this. It's pretty crazy. Um, so in summary, he says that, you know, he's comparing, like I said, Apple and Microsoft across 17 categories, you know, based on their income, their balance sheets, and their dividend, which are all, you know, sound fundamental things to go over. Um, with that being said, uh, you know, he actually surprises you as you read the article as far as what he thought, who he thought was going to be the winner. And then in the end, there's a clear winner by a landslide, and he was not really predicting that to be the case. Um, so let's get right into the categories. So what he goes over is revenue growth, gross profit uh, growth, net income growth, gross profit margin, net income conversion, PE ratio, total cash and short-term investments, total asset position and growth, return on asset ratio, total long-term debt to total cash and short-term investment ratio, total equity growth, total equity to total asset ratio, total equity to total asset ratio, uh, I think he actually mentioned that twice. Yeah, that's okay. He did. Uh, but don't worry. He doesn't go over it twice. Uh, dividend payout and yield, dividend payout ratio, dividend five-year average growth, and annual dividend increase history. So with that being said, if you look at their... Uh, one thing that I noticed, and I thought that was pretty interesting, Apple has about, let's just say, $295 billion in annual revenue with about $64 billion in net income. Well, Microsoft has about half of Apple's uh, total revenue, which is about 153 billion. It's about half of Apple's total revenue, and yet their net income is like only you know 13, 14 billion dollars less than Apple's. I thought that was crazy. Like that's not a lot. Like that's you know compared to 50% less. Uh, total revenue, they have almost a close, they're getting close to closing in the gap on the total net income. I thought that was a huge shock. I actually did not know that. And, uh, you know, I thought that was a great side by side comparison that, like, wow, that's kind of mind boggling and, like, you know, eye opening to see that. Um, total balance sheet, you know, also checks out pretty well, too. Um, Total uh, cash and short-term investments for Apple is about $77 billion, let's say. And then total uh, cash and short-term investments for Microsoft is about $132 billion. So they just blow Apple out of the water. Uh, and I'm kind of alluding to a trend right now with what I'm saying with even this first point that he goes over. Um, so, you know, he ends up giving Microsoft the uh, point for total revenue uh, and, you know, the growth of the revenue. Um, he also gives Microsoft, again, another point for uh, their gross profit. And then 
again, Microsoft gets a third point for their net income. There's a strong, 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 strong across the board for total revenue, total gross profit, and total net income. Um, I'm going to skip ahead right now because I don't want to go ahead and just read the entire article. But let's go down to the bottom and spoiler alert, you know, if you really run, if you really wanted to read the entire article, I highly suggest you do so. But I am going to skip down right now to the bottom um, and I'm going to go over like what the conclusion was. So in the end, after uh, tallying up all the points that he awarded over the 17 categories, Microsoft is declared the winner. And out of the 17 categories, Microsoft won 13 of the 17, Apple won four of the 17. And it's kind of crazy. Like he did not predict this, if you read the article in the beginning, he actually thought it might be kind of equal. Um, and you can see that Microsoft just dominates the income statement categories where they had five versus uh, Apple had one. Um, so that was insane to see that like basically Microsoft has a much better income statement, uh, you know, uh, trajectory and, you know, uh, chance at being better than Apple. Uh, the balance sheet categories, again, Microsoft just blows it out of the water, like five and a half points to one and a half point, um, you know, to start the total cash and short term investments, they actually got split equally. Uh, it's only two times that happens on, uh, Steven's scorecard here. Um, so again, five and a half to one and a half. And then the dividend categories, it's still Microsoft that won that category, but like, you know, it's not that far off. It's only one point off. And, you know, they're, Apple's not that far behind Microsoft. So it's like, they're, they're kind of equal in that sense. But in the other two categories though, they're not equal. And Steven lays out great points. And, you know, if you differ in opinion from him, uh, you know, let me know in the comments below, what do you think? I thought this is a great article, very well worded, and yeah, uh, 13 to 4. Um, so again, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I hope that you do subscribe and read this article because it's really interesting. I've definitely saved this down as a bookmark on my computer. Can't wait to revisit it in like, you know, three, six, nine months. Um, and yeah, let me just know what you think. See you guys soon.